Coming up in this edition of TV Black Box, rumours that Channel 7's Big Brother has been axed. But what's the truth? A new twist in the AFL broadcast rights, and this one will certainly set the cat amongst the pigeons. And Netflix declares TV will be dead in five to ten years. Is the streamer right? Welcome to the podcast where people in the industry get their news. This is TV Black Box, the podcast. This is TV Black Box, bringing you the inside goss from the TV industry. I'll introduce the panel in just a moment, but it was during this week in television history that saw wedding bells ring out across the world. It was the 29th of July, 1981, when we watched Di and Charles exchange vows at St Paul's Cathedral. Every network, including the ABC, broadcast the big day with over 750 million people watching across the globe. And they both lived happily ever after. (laughs) All right, time to meet the panel. And it's an interesting motley crew we've got for you today because Robbo's here. G'day, Robbo. Hello there. Great to be with you. Matthew, uh, Matthew Simmons is here. Hello, Matthew. Hello, how you doing? Phil Kosh, hello. Hi, Rob. Mulk is with us too. G'day, Mulk. You'll have to speak up. I'm about to go through a tunnel. Okay, fair enough. And our special guest this week, a uh, new thing we're introducing, a guest of the week, is none other than Matthew Stevenson, or Matt Stevenson as you'd know him. You'd know him from Neighbours, Home and Away, acclaimed actor. G'day, Matt. Welcome to TV Black Box. G'day, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Now, mate. You've actually made a bit of news this week. Uh, there's a lovely feature in New Idea about uh, the first anniversary of uh, Dieter's Brummer's tragic death. I mean, a, a shocking, shocking death. I know you were very close with him and you attended a special memorial service which New Idea has uh, written about this week. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece written by Jenny Brown and um, obviously Dieter's passing was uh, absolutely tragic and... Um, uh, you know, I mean, whilst whilst we can't bring him back, we now, his loved ones, look towards legacies um, where we can honour deep. And uh, one of those is uh, a lot of us advocating for mental ill health awareness. I certainly know we, uh, Deet's mum, Dawn, um, read the article and she was brought to tears by the article. So she um, she sends a heartwarming thanks to all Dieter's fans um, and friends who loved him and supported him. So, um, yeah, Deed's mum, Dawn, is an amazingly courageous woman and she was very touched by the story. And, and mate, one of the things I loved about the um, memorial service that uh, Dawn had was that she took Dieter's logie, melted it down and gave everyone lots of little logies. Yeah, it was beautiful. She actually did that um, after he won it in 1994. She was teaching English. Oh. Yeah, she was teaching English at night school and um, one of the students was a jeweller and Dawn's, Dawn's philosophy about um, acting is it's a, obviously a collaboration, a team sport, so when Dee won it to keep him grounded, she said that she was going to melt it down and give it to all of Dee's teammates and... Um, while she did melt it down, she never got around to handing it out. So um, there was a few of us that attended a memorial at Dawn's place uh, a few months back and um, and she handed handed the small logies out there. It's um, a beautiful memento. <laughs> I just have this vision of this melted logie that hasn't done anything and she's had to remelt it to make the, the small logies. <laughs> Yeah, well, she lost a few of them there for a while because it was a, a while ago, but, um, no, she, she managed to find them all. And, uh, look, it's beautiful. Um, you know, uh, a lot of us who work with Deet have got a uh, keepsake. So um, I'm planning on... That. Yeah, I'm planning on making it into a necklace or an earring. Um, so when I advocate for mental ill health, you know, I mean, he'll be there with me. So it's, um, mm. yeah, a really nice sentiment from Dawn. Yeah, and and one of the other things I found very interesting was that um, a medium was used to be able to try and communicate with him. 
Yes, um, the medium has given Dawn an enormous um, source of comfort. So uh, at the memorial, the medium did speak with a few of us um, and Deke came through to each and every one of us. He came did it feel like he came through, mate? Yeah, absolutely. I was blown away with some of the things that the medium um, was relaying. Um, when it came my turn, Deke was standing there in a muscle pose and the medium said, you guys... Uh, it looks like you guys have spent a, a lot of time um, on the beach um, and, and he's posing <laughs> He's posing and he's smiling at you. And I just laughed and I said, yes, look, Dita was a very good-looking rooster and um, we all had to be fit back then running around in our Speedos in the bay and um, Deep would always joke with me because he was a, a practical joker. Uh, we used to play quite a few jokes on each other. He would always say to me, Steve-O, you're looking good, but you're never going to look as good as me. So that muscle pose was, uh, <laughs> was, was basically him taking the piss uh, as he usually did, which was great. We used to play pinch pinch punch uh, first day of the month. And um, one day he Oh, got, you boys would have got a bit crazy with that, wouldn't you? Well, one day he hid in the makeup. Uh, closet, and as I was going in to get my makeup on, he just jumped out and gave me a pinch and a punch. Um, and uh, yeah, he would stop at nothing to win. He, very competitive, he was. So um, yeah, the, the the stuff with the medium was awesome. Um, she mentioned a few things that um, you know really only Deet and I knew, um, and that was one of them. So um, it gave me a sort, I guess, a source of comfort as well. Um, I guess, that memorial um, and chatting with the medium for sure. Mm. sure. Matt, it's a really, really special moment. I think it's so lovely that you've been able to share that with us tonight. Um, I'd like to also, I I never met Dita Brummer, but I've got to tell everyone that I had a picture of Dita and um, and Angel, Melissa George, on my wall. Um, I want to tell you it wasn't for Melissa George. Uh, back we, back Robert, in the, uh, we all knew that without you telling yeah, us. Yeah, back in the yeah back in the younger days, it was certainly because of Dita Brummer. He yeah, what a, what an amazing character and what an amazing actor. A uh, beautiful, beautiful man inside and out, and I just don't think he realised how talented he was. Um, I've People worked with don't. a lot. Yeah, I've worked with a lot of talented actors who have gone on to um, to be really you know big international household names and. Um, in my humble opinion, uh, Dita was Dita was right up there. Had he have known how good he was, um, then you know, I think we would have seen incredible things from him. Yeah, look, that's an interesting aspect because to me, I feel like he never reached his full potential. He easily could have been in Hollywood, overseas, uh, doing big things in the Chris Hemsworth sphere. But um, obviously, maybe it was the demons. He's in a demons holding him back, but. Um, it's certainly a shame. Yeah, I think so. People like Chris um, heavily focused on achieving their goals, but Deep Deep was right at home talking to a concreter how to screed concrete, or to a philosopher, or an astronomer. Um, he was more at home, um, you know, lighting campfires, and his focus was just on getting out in nature. And um, he really didn't have a strong focus. Uh, a strong career focus. Uh, had he off, um, I'm sure he would have um, he, he would have gone on to equal stuff that Chris and, and others have done for sure. I have no doubt. Yeah. Well, we are thrilled to have you here, Matt. And uh, you get to talk TV. We all love talking TV here. We're going to talk lots of TV topics. Find out what you've been watching as we move into the news headlines. And will it be Paramount? Will it be seven? Will another player enter the AFL rights rate? Well, it turns out if you're the sporting code waiting to choose who gets the next contract might just be an own goal. While the AFL has been talking to major network players attempting to draw up a picture-perfect deal with a huge price tag, the Australian is now reporting that time has lapsed on scoring one great price. Economic conditions have softened in the last few months and as a result, it's increasingly likely that the league will be forced to sell the rights for less than they would have initially hoped. An insider source told the newspaper for every week the AFL has been holding out, 
things are moving against them. There's also been talk about a phony bidding war. The reported $600 million a year offer by Tenant Paramount, well, that's now been debunked and no formal offer was ever made by the network, apparently. Rather, the AFL appears to have used Ten's rumoured interest as a stalking horse to try and drive up rival bids, most notably from Seven and Foxtel. Well, Robbo, this is interesting. We've been talking AFL rights multiple weeks here. I've been here saying if 10 pulls this off, this is a game changer for the network that's starting to claw back some ratings. And if they had the AFL, they'd become a really top player. But it, this article sounds like they're not even in the race and the AFL have tried to use them to jack up the price. Yeah, which is interesting, isn't it? Because what we're looking at with free to wear is that the, look, the numbers just aren't there. We talk about this on this program every single week. The numbers are not there. We're still talking as if Kerry Packer uh, was uh, negotiating the rights in 2005. <laughs> we're, we're not We're not there which anymore. Which even he walked away from, lest no, we forget. No, no lest One we forget. One of his final acts on his deathbed was to, was to jack say, up the price. walk away. Yep, absolutely. So I, I think we're, we're still in this kind of era of thinking that it's the same thing. It's not. The, the numbers just aren't there anymore. Also, um, your Perth audience, they love free to wear and they think that they should get their AFL for free mm. on the Seven Network mostly uh, because, uh, the, you know, we know that Seven is massive over there. Um, this is the and, problem. And Seven are playing a big media game in those markets, Perth and Adelaide. That's right. You know, putting the fear of God into viewers that they're going to have to pay to watch their local teams. Which is brilliant because if you think the AFL is doing the same thing by saying, oh, Paramount's coming along, well, Seven's yeah. doing the same thing. <laughs> they're the legacy broadcaster. <laughs> they're doing the same thing. So I, I think this is fantastic if that's what they're doing. Roy and HG call the head of the AFL the murderer for a reason <laughs> because he murders the code. Look up the podcast. It's on ABC Listen. It's fantastic. Um, but that that's what's happening. Never heard of them. Sorry, Robin. Uh, oh, only because they didn't talk to you at the Logies. We've heard <laughs> the story. It's hashtag number 17. Um, but, yeah, th th this, this is a big thing. And I think uh, it's all about trying to get the biggest profit and trying to get the biggest number. And it's it, it seems like executives right around Australia, whether, whether it's in media or not, is worried about the size of it. They need to get over their preoccupation with size, i.e. the profit, <laughs> and they need to relax and think about what's going to be the best for the game and for the television viewers. Um, there has been a long time thought in this country where you go, oh, we, we, we got the rights for $1 billion or $2 billion. No, that's not it anymore. What you need to start doing is thinking about how does it service the game on you know on the ground level, uh, and how does it service the fans? And that's what's changing here. It appears that people are more interested in the big numbers and the money, as opposed to the people who actually go to the games, the people who actually buy it, whether they go to KO or Fox or whatever, or the people who are going to go to Seven for the free to air broadcast. This is the big thing, and I think the mm. AFL has forgotten that in their quest to get the biggest number. Look, it's great to get a report from Robbo in his socialist utopia. Um, the, the difficulty, particularly around this article, <laughs> Rob, is that uh, we know... I love, I love you accusing others of being socialists, <laughs> but let's move on from that. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the notion that, it, you know, and I, I agree that the AFL could be more focused on what is good for the game. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Agree. Sorry, Mocky, Mocky, Mocky. So you're Please. saying just then that the AFL is not focused on the game, but they should be? I say they could be better focused on what is good for the game. However, they have a lot of competing, um, uh, you know, it, not enemies, but competing uh, things for attraction. When you throw in the Players Association, who understandably want to give the players who make the game a better cut of the a better, bigger slice of the pie. You've got the AFL wanting to grow the game within Australia and make it much more popular, if that, that is indeed possible. Um, and then you've got the fact you've got the fans that want to watch it anytime, anywhere, anyhow. And right now, they can watch it on Seven when it's broadcast and on Foxtel at any time except the grand final. Uh, and, look, all of that mixed together, we know that things are not getting any cheaper to make. So for the AFL to ask for, I mean, even if it was five bucks more, whatever it is, um, they have, the AFL's not a charity. 
They want to make money so that they can grow the game. You can only grow the game if you've got money. The only way you're going to get that is through sponsorship and through your broadcast rights deals. Matt, do you watch it on Foxtel now or would you want it on free-to-air? Uh, do I? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely watch it on Foxtel. And I think I think the European model for sport being, all sport being on subscription uh, TV is just inevitable in, in my view. Um, and Fox do provide a better service. My, in my uh, it's interesting what you say about the service, and and I'll I'll take that. But in this country, we still believe in the anti siphoning list and having big sports on free to air TV, um, and, and that is a fear factor. Seven will play up if if Foxtel are trying to nab those rights and take them away for subscription TV. All right, moving on, and an interesting rumor hit socials today. So dramatic reported that Big Brother has been axed. But senior executives at Seven have told TV Black Box in no uncertain terms that is not true. But if you were Seven, would you be bringing it back as it has been over the past few years or would you return to its original format? Matthew Simmons, what do you think? It it had an air of believability, didn't it? Uh, I mean, absolutely. The ratings, uh, I think they were the worst that it's ever had, even back when 10 was failing with it and 9 was dropping just you know, purely based on the landscape of watching TV. Yeah, we can't really... Uh, and when you say that, are you referring to overnights or the total TV? It, simply overnights. And to be honest, mm. that's the first thing I pay attention to. I'm not I'm not like, you know, some people that will look at the rest. So, And that's why I say the way we watch TV has changed. That's why the ratings are... are and that's why it's anyway. wor- we have to note it had a something like, a, and Michael, correct me, I'm sure, a 53% pickup in total TV. Uh, yes, and we're remembering that Total TV, compared to Overnights, Overnights is just yeah. Five City Metro, yep. Total TV is Catch Up and Regional and Everybody. And but it was still things. a big number compared to other shows and, and their pickup. Oh, look, it, it was a sizable one and one that we're starting to see become uh, more of a consideration for every program, but particularly in primetime. <laughs> Even mm. then, I, I, the ratings weren't like m- m- married at first sight, astronomical, we're up to a million, whatever, which is what it was getting, you know, back in the day. Any, anyway, the, the, the reason why it was believable was because I think people, it, it lost itself from the Big Brother brand. I, you know, Big Brother was known as a, a live show and you could you, you were able to tune into the, the silly moments and everything. And now I'm someone who actually quite liked the game aspect and adding the strategy like they do in the American version, which is really done quite quite well and, and to a T. But it, this felt like it was trying to be halfway between. So when the audience gets sick of that, it, it does have a bit of a breath of fresh air to say, oh, it might, it might go, and maybe that's kaput now that it's done all three commercial networks. Given that it, it it's not confirmed that it will it will leave, but might come back in an effort I, to get I can rating. tell you, senior, senior people at Seven said, this is not true. Potentially is as a decision not made, possibly. You know, in two months, it's, things might might change. They're saying it's not true. Okay. All right. So, you know, regardless, to, to do something different, to, to, to not have this kind of breath of, oh, it, it's not true, why not try and return it to the old format or, or, or get something get something from it? Because I think viewers were getting disconnected with what was happening. And um, at, at the end of the day, it, it, I think it's on a downward slide. It, it, it wasn't as good as the year before and it wasn't as good as the year before that. We saw the VIP version fail as well that only lasted one stint so if they are going to bring it back for another year then i think that they need to find something of those good old days and it's not just the good old people mm. it's just the way the show is produced and filmed it, it can't be survivor in a warehouse it needs to have that sort of classic big brother feel to it and then viewers probably will return uh, I, uh, just a reminder for people survivor in a warehouse was the tv black box term i love that that stuck philip <laughs> it hasn't been connecting has it uh look well I, I tried to watch it a few times but i'm a bit like matthew i i i, well, I know you said you like some aspects of the games i hated the games i just thought it was a mishmash you didn't know what it was I found it tedious television to watch them competing in really, it was like watching paint dry some of those games. And I gave it a go a few times before I decided it wasn't for me. Uh, Look, I was lucky enough in the first series of Big Brother to go into the tunnels and spy on all those inmates in person. Amazing. I didn't think I'd love it as much as I did, but I could have spent days in there Mm. just watching them put on makeup and make cups of coffee. And I, I, to this day, I can't tell you why I found it fascinating. But it I was. used to watch the live streams. Yeah, well, well I was never that desperate, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I was. If, if we're going to talk about broadcast television in this kind of program, 
where were the moments? And I mean that by where were the social media moments? Yeah. Now, I follow the show. I follow people on the show. Where were the moments that take us from 2005, 2006 to 2022? There were no moments. Every one of those things that were produced for that show were produced with the idea that everyone still watches broadcast television. Now, yes, Mm. they need to do that because it is on broadcast television. I understand that. Don't send letters. But what I also (laughs) want to say is that you need moments that connect people who didn't watch it. Now, I watch a lot of things after I've seen moments on social media. So I will forget, and it's a wonderful show, but I'll forget that uh, Matt Hell is on. I'll see moments. I'll think, that's amazing. I'll watch the episode. That's what it's missing. And that is, I just think, is unforgivable. The, the fact that they haven't realised that they need to get moments is beyond it. Matt, is Big Brother a staple in your house or did you guys find yourself watching something else? My wife and I watched it. Um, I watched it for two episodes uh, and then I just turned to my wife and said, this is Survivor Indoors. So to hear Survivor In a way, house, house, Matt. In a way, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and then my wife, my wife continued to watch it and uh, for that reason, it, it, yeah, it just bored me. There, there were no moments as Robbo's saying, um, and it just looked like Survivor in a warehouse. So, um, Thank you. Uh, yep, I just, um, <laughs> no, I gave it away. And this is the challenge, I think, honestly, and it still amazes me. I acknowledge absolutely up front the cost to do what I'm about to suggest. However, in nearly 2023, with the internet infinitely better than it was back in the original, you know, iterations of being able to watch live streams and stuff, how it is not a let's put people in a house, let's keep them in there for six, eight, 12 weeks, let's give, let's, let's take as an example, seven mate and transform it into big brother mate or seven big brother. I love that. I don't like that. That's that's amazing. Yep. Allow people to tune in and just yep. like we'd Love have to it. give it a delay. They're worried the about things. turkey slaps though, Mark. So give it a half an hour things. delay, mate. Like big hair, mm. yep. you yep. know, yep. But, give sorry? us a daily show. Lock it in, dare I say, at seven o'clock at night. R.I.P. Home and Away. Um, but give it, no. give it a place to You can't to say go. R.I.P. Home and Away with the guests we've got tonight, Mark. Look, Matt Pull it back. What I'm getting say at. I'm sorry. Mate, uh, Home and Away is about to have its mid-season finale to get out of the way of the Commonwealth Games. RIP programming. Sorry, honestly. Commonwealth Games. Where are they? I, I I don't know this. Are they on? Oh my god, you guys are on a going down rabbit holes tonight. So, Mark, basically, <laughs> yes, I agree with you. Seven, mate, twenty four seven. You've got me. I'm hooked in. I'll probably take annual leave and watch it all. Big all Sunday right, let's night move on. Show. Let's go. Yeah, love it. All right, it's been the topic of discussion for a few of our podcasts now, but Netflix boss Reed Hastings has lent his hand to the conversation. When it comes to traditional linear TV, the streaming giant's co-chief said such a format will be dead in five to ten years. Despite making the grim statement in the same investor call where the streamer posted a near one million, one million subscriber loss for their second quarter of the year, Hastings compared their results to ratings from American TV ratings data. The company pointed to Nielsen data showing Netflix dwarfs the competition for total viewing time at more than 1.3 trillion hours for the 21-22 TV season compared with 753 billion for nearest rival CBS. Netflix's his overall share for TV viewing in July was at 7.7%, up from 6.6% in July. Um, look, I've got to be honest, I have always been ready to write off the whole TV is dead thing. You know, people have been saying this for 20 years. But Matt, I am finding a lack of um, innovation and you know, the ease of going to subscription and catch-up services is certainly changing my viewing habits. Well, I have two adult children, 21 and 18 years of age, and they don't watch free-to-air TV and none of their friends watch free-to-air TV. I mean, it wasn't like back in the day where the only place we could catch the news was in front of a box um, over dinner. Um, But... To me, the numbers don't lie, and I've actually, I've actually surveyed my um, my kids' friends, and uh, yeah, there's a zero uh, amount of them who who watch free to air. So that's that tells a grim tale, I think. Matt, you're welcome back on yeah. TV Black Box anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's great. I love him. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm full of laughs. But, but what do we do? You know, basically at the moment, Philip, we're seeing a concentration of the 7.30 time slot. So nothing matters to programmers really other than 7.30. And, yes, uh, 10, I think, are doing a great job with Have You Been Paying Attention after the 7.30 show and um, uh, the cheap seats. But realistically, the other networks don't have the money, don't have the budget to take a chance on a nine o'clock show and there's no interest in trying to sustain an audience. So are we just going to get this glut of reality TV shows at 7.30 until literally the tyres have the tread is gone and we're on the rims and then the rims have caught fire and then the cars exploded like a scene from Home and Away that Matt knows very well about. <laughs> and the TV executives are still there going, ah, there's still some petrol in the tank, we can keep going. Oh, look, I, I do think they've dropped the ball. Um, you know, with my publishing background, you know, we've seen a whole generation of women that have never bought a women's magazine. You've seen yeah. a whole generation of young men that have never bought a newspaper to check out sports or anything else. So that you know that that that's a that's a massive cultural change. Yeah, and the same yeah. thing's happening in TV. You know, you're going to have, as Matt was saying, you're going to have a whole generation of people that have really have got no familiarity with free to air TV. They have no desire to watch it. They they're going to watch their devices. They're going to watch streaming. You know, the, the the audience just isn't going to be there. And as you said, they're not innovating. I think I think they've. I think there is a place for free to air, but I think it needs to be blown up and put back together. I don't think it's working at the moment. I don't have the answers, and no one had the answers in publishing either. I have the answers, but no one listens to me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Matthew, you are our generation's, what do they call it now, Z, Z. uh, fetus. Hey, hold on. on. I'm the same age as Matt. We're the same. What are we, 21, Robbo. We're 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like 62. Hashtag TikTok Um, and, uh, yeah, (laughs) Lix and and, and Flex. um, Free-to-air television still still makes lots of content. Yes, it's being delivered and, and... and executives will tell you it, we look at Total TV because we're distributing differently now. But are you drawn to the content free to air television is making? Let's not talk about free to air television. Are you drawn to their content? This is a great sample. I, I don't get the premise of the question. The content. What I'm, I'm saying the- is that free to air makes a lot of content that they distribute on many different platforms, yep. like catch up services. So are you sampling a lot of free-to-air content no matter what, how it's distributed? No. No, and, you know, it's, it's probably because, you know, someone like Netflix, they've got room to have all these wild ideas and then and then see some of them fail, Byron Bay's maybe, and then, you know, <clears throat> and then they have some really oh, great sorry. successes. <clears throat> but I would say that Seven, you know, because because they're programming, I guess, for a year, and, yeah, they've got some some other shows that they pop in here and there, and I know there's one they're doing on Seven Plus, and, and they're moving to that kind of model. But um, b- because I, I don't, did, they, they wouldn't have enough money to sample too many different creative things, something that might appeal to this audience and this audience and this audience. Like there's that Formula One show on Netflix, which you would think would be really niche and just for people that like that. But and it probably is like a lot of the people that do watch that are from that sector, but there'd be others as well. But can Seven afford to just do things for just this little bit of content, just the single mums, and there may be some content just for the teens? But probably not. So I would say, no, I'm not drawn to the content because there's just not enough variety and creativity because the, I don't think they've got the room to do so. No, I think that's a very fair point. All right, in some sad and shocking news this week, one of the much-loved stars of Gogglebox Australia, Di Kershaw, has passed away after a short battle with throat cancer. Di and Mick have been letting us into their lounge room since the first season seven years ago. Ten Years First shared the following tribute. Some sad news from the Network 10 family today. Di Kershaw, who loved watching the box while being watched on the box, has died aged 76. The Gogglebox star was one of the show's original couch critics alongside her husband of 50 years, Mick. She would enjoy reviewing some of our favourite series, often with a big glass of red wine and a packet of twisties. You can pay people to have people murdered and that's what he should have done. wonder why they didn't ask me to be on the show. <laughs> Oh, I love it. The mother and grandmother began her career as a model before becoming a respected Indigenous art dealer. In 2020, she was awarded an Order of Australia for her service to the visual arts. 
Well, this is a really sad loss. Di was a, a great part of Gogglebox. She will sorely be missed. Uh, absolutely, Rob. And, and I think we've seen that play out, not just in the media coverage uh, since Di's passing has been announced, but also in the tributes from her castmates and particularly from punters. You know, just the, yeah. saying how much they're going to miss Di, the, the things they appreciated about her. I thought it was a lovely touch from um, Foxtel and 10 to put out a little, uh, um, uh, like, montage of photos of mm. Di's life. Um, not just the Di that we knew on camera, but Di is this just incredibly gorgeous woman, powerful, you know, kind of strutting her stuff and doing all of those sorts of things. It, it helped give us some insight into a little bit of her life that we don't know about. Philip, isn't it amazing how a woman who wasn't an actress, wasn't, you know, chasing a TV career, actually, when we heard the news, it, it really affected you? Oh, look, I, I, th- I think the thing about Di is she was authentic. Do you know what I mean? She didn't put on airs and graces. She loved to drink. She called <laughs> even some of her own castmates names. You know what I mean? You got truth out of her, and I think that resonated with people. And, you know, she, she also had an amazing career before she was ever on mm. TV. You know, she was, she got an order of Australia for pioneering um, a, an Indigenous art gallery. You know, she's a really interesting woman. I, you know, I think we all, and because we know Mick as well, I think we all just felt, you know, it, yeah. it was a bit like losing some sort of adopted, you know, grandma and grandpa, except they were mm. a cool grandma and grandpa, you know. Yeah, we'll die. We will miss you, baby. All right, still to come, Kath and Kim return. Stan Grant takes control of the big desk at Q&A and the panel tell us what, they sh- what shows they've been watching this week. You're listening to TV Black Box, the podcast. Now it's time for Hatches and Dispatches. Grab a glass of Cardinet because Kath and Kim are back. To celebrate the 20th anniversary of the show, the cast have been reunited to film a one-off special with new sketch material alongside the show's most iconic moments. While no broadcaster has yet been announced, all of your favourite residents of Fountain Lakes will be returning. There's a shining new production company in the mix. Well, it's Big Al Pictures. The new kid on the block is being launched by former head of television at Warner Brothers Australia, Sean Murphy. Big Daddy Murphy will also serve as CEO and executive producer. Would love to see her pay slip. Former ABC and Foxtel executive Josie Mason Campbell has landed herself a new role as head of unscripted content and development at Fremantle Australia. In her previous role as head of entertainment and factual at the ABC, she oversaw such shows as the wonderful Old People's Home for Four-Year-Olds and Love on the Spectrum. And finally, the ABC has ended the joint presenter model on Q&A, appointing Stan Grant as the full-time host. The duty has been shared between Grant, Virginia Trioli and David Spears since Hamish McDonald's departure in 2021. In a statement announcing his appointment, the ABC has described Grant as one of their most accomplished journalists and presenters. And that is this week's Hatches and Dispatches. Rob, back to you, big fella. Such a bad uh, idea. You've got to feel sorry for Stan Grant. It is He is inheriting, it's like shattered glass. Q&A is broken. It's on the wrong night. It is a sh- shadow of its former self. Flocking a dead and horse. when they eventually yep. exit, he's going to be blamed. Well, it's interesting that you say that, Rob, because Stan's first tilt as full-time host will see Q&A move back to Monday night. Um, we Hang on, is that official? I didn't see that. For one week. So oh, that's a test. <laughs> the week, it's a test. The first week that he's hosting it, it moves back to Monday night's 9.35, live from the Gama Festival in the Northern Territory, uh, with Stan hosting. And look, it makes complete sense that they would do that. Also, the Thursday night time slot is busy that week, as it has been the past few weeks for the ABC. Look, I this is a real struggle because from the minute that this was announced on social media, and I acknowledge it's social media for what it's worth, not one person said it was a good idea. And the difficulty for the ABC is that 
Stan Grant's episodes in the triumvirate of uh, hosts that they've been testing, I guess, have been the ones that have always rated the lowest of an already compromised rated, you know, Thursday night Q&A. Yeah, that's true. So I don't know what's going on in this, and I don't know why they thought Stan was the best idea, other than David Spears and Virginia Trioli are already gainfully employed by the ABC. It's it's just such Spears a... Spears is one day a week doing Insiders. It, it's 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 just gobsmacking that this seems to be a bad decision on top of a bad decision to try and attempt to dig up out of the, the hole that Q&A is in. Well, mm. I'm looking forward to the Seven Network's premiere of Real Life, the new current <laughs> affairs show, after Seven News, 6.30 across the Seven Network. Oh, don't start me on This Is Your Life, God. Uh, well, you can talk about that now because it's time to open the TV Binge Box. And for fans of the TV Binge Box podcast, we're actually stealing their group binge segment while they're on a well, what seems a very extended break. I, are we, they coming back, Mo? We refer to it as a hiatus, Rob. Right. Okay. They're in the cottages so at week, uh, nine. We are all going to watch something to, and share our views. This week, Robbo has picked 30 Ruck, and we'll come to that in a moment. But first, let's find out what everyone has been watching individually this week. Matt, you are our special guest. What have you been watching? Uh, thanks there, Rob. Uh, Mystery Road Origin. Uh, oh, excellent. Watch that. Yeah. <clears throat> they're doing um, they're doing great things mm. in uh, Bunya, and it, it is so visceral. Like, and yeah, it's it's almost like you can just feel the red dust um, when you're watching it. It's a it's a brilliant brilliant piece of television production, and I'm hooked. Well, mate, we'll have to get you on it. Needs a bit of Matt Stevenson on it, I think. Well, I could well be. Yes. Oh, oh. oh. you heard it here first, friends. He's doing research, people. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say, let's just say, Bunya Production, um, Bunya Productions are my favourite production company at the moment. I Excellent. Love oh, well, we we will uh, look out for that one, Philip. What have you been watching? Uh, I've been watching the Twelve on um, on Excellent. Boxtel. Yeah, uh, great. Which I won't bang on about all the stuff I normally do. It's just the best piece, <laughs> best piece of Australian drama I've seen in a very long time. I actually can't wait for each episode to drop. I wish yeah. I could binge it, but I have been, yeah, on the edge of my seat waiting for the next episode because it, it's it's just a brilliant piece of television. And look, this is this is one from a few weeks ago, but we weren't on air for a couple of weeks, as you know. Uh, I call, I watched a show called God's Favourite Idiot on Netflix. Oh, yes. Um, it's actually been slammed by critics and for all sorts of reasons, some of it because it's promoting oh, Christianity, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's a it's terrible not show. Really. It's a oh. comedy. Yes, it could be funnier, but I laughed a lot. Um, you get to see Denise Roberts from GP dressed as a warrior woman. Magda Zabanski is God which is sort of quite entertaining. Um, oh, that's interesting because I've only seen the first two episodes and forgot to go back to it, uh, uh, to be honest, And but I liked it. Uh, yeah, so did I. Look, I thought if you want something lighthearted and have, worth a laugh, it's worth watching. All right. I um, pretty much have been watching 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown. BritBox have the first five series and... This is a show that's been going for, like, I think something like 20 seasons, but the early ones seem to be popping up on Amazon Prime Video, some mm-hmm. on BritBox, but now BritBox has seasons one to five, and I hadn't seen season five, so I went and binged that. Absolutely loved it. And I, I um, and and the family is loving, loving Hunted Australia. Um, just addicted to that show. I think 10 really have done a great thing getting that show and congratulations for all their success. Robbo, what have you been watching? Sorry, I'm still back on when Philip said that that show was a comedy and we were meant to laugh at it. Uh, I, I watched <laughs> wow. the first episode of that. I, I didn't think it was funny at all. But I love Philip and I, I appreciate his uh, <laughs> his opinion. Um, and I'll still so have Philip, him your over. Your review just got a review, by the way. Yeah, I, bet, I, bet <laughs> I said it wasn't for everyone and it had been slammed by, you know, wanker critics like Rob. <laughs> Robo. Like Rob, yeah. Robo. No, 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 we all heard Rob. I didn't slam it. No, 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 Rob, Robo. you're a wanker, Rob. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. We've all been trying to say it. Um, no, I've been watching 30 Rock, which we're going to talk about in a moment, but this is a show that has changed my life and I have no doubt will change the lives of the rest of the panel. I can't wait to talk about it. We're talking season four, episode 20 and 21. But, Rob, that's 
what I call a tease. We'll be right back after this short break to find out exactly what the whole panel thinks about those episodes of 30 Rock. We don't have any advertising uh, on this show because we don't get paid. Right uh, so we're right back anyway. Uh, yeah, Rob, back to you. Matthew, what have you been watching? Um, I've gone back and watched two shows that are done, but one is again for me and one was starting it for the first time. So the first one's the one that I'm watching again. It's The 100. It's on Netflix. It's got Bob Morley and Eliza Taylor, I want to say, Australian actors who both play um, lead roles. It's an American show, so really it's just by chance. Fantastic show. It's sci-fi. Um, human population has had to go to Earth and they're coming back after a uh, a hundred years, near a hundred years, I'm pretty sure. So I've just restarted that, um, and I'm, it's a it's a show that I absolutely love. So if you like sci-fi, and I'm not someone who thinks that they What's do. What's that like on, sci-fi. mate? I might take a look. Netflix. It's on Netflix. Okay. Um, so I'm not someone who thinks that they like sci-fi, but this has kind of got me into the genre. It was when I first watched it. Um, started in late 2020, I think. Um, so I'm, I'm going back again. I'm in the first season. I'm going to go right through again. It's a great show. Love it. The other one that I'm that I'm that I've started for the first time, but ended a couple of years ago, I think, is Modern Family. And so I know that this is very popular. It's not as funny to me as other sitcoms like Friends and The Office. They're definitely my top two, uh, but definitely still funny. Still got a a great deal of laughs. You know, f- fantastic actors. Really, the whole cast. Um, and we're about midway through that, and that we kind of watch a bit more casually. But that that one's great. So if you if you're thinking, hey, I, I kind of like Modern Family. I've seen a little bit, um, and which is why how I started. I've seen a little bit some clips on hashtag TikTok. Um, <laughs> but that's how I started, and wow. it got me in. And now I'm just watching it through, which is great. So, sorry, how old are you? Hashtag oh TikTok. <laughs> I believe Rob said I'm a fetus still. So oh, <laughs> that friends is generation a, fetus. That is how you do a callback. Well done, oh. Matthew Simmons. <laughs> Bob, what have you been watching? I've got 11,000 shows I want to tell you, you about. You've got two. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, will skip, I will skip past right. telling you how much I love Solar Opposites on Disney+. Plus. That's one. I said you're, I not, skip- you're, you're not getting around a smart <laughs> by throwing in other ones. That's one. you got one more. Oh, that was then good. allow me to talk about my two shows, Rob. The first well, one is I- Hunted Australia, and I want to congratulate Tim for a great launch and, and successful run of what will be a very short show. It finishes up next week. Um, uh, so that Good. the mask singer gets in the in into they're not the stretching it out. Good on no, them. No, no, they're it's, it's a fast, catchy format, right? You want to be mm. out there. You don't want to see episodes drag out where they're not catching yeah. people. You want to see uh, catch people. The biggest conversation I've had with people about Hunted is it is a very easy show to just sit and watch. Yeah. As soon as you start to think about it, you're cooked. Because <laughs> why would I let those hunters in my house ever? Why would I let them have a look at the stuff on my fridge or take a note off my fridge? Or, you know, it's put up wanted signs around a community. It's just a ludicrous premise, but it's been lots of fun. I don't know how it will go for season two, but excellent work on season one. Um, the other show I wanted to talk about was the premiere of Seven's iter- latest iteration of This Is Your Life uh, with Melissa Doyle that featured Ian Thorpe on Sunday night uh, that just was swallowed up by its own largesse. It went for way too long and talked about about three minutes of Ian Thorpe's career uh, with one nice anecdote from his mum. And that was about the size of it. And then Barnsley sang two songs for no apparent reason. Um, mm. It just it just was all over the place. It was lovely to hear the stories and have the memories recounted, but it actually wasn't This Is Your Life. It was This Is A Couple Of Years Of Your Life, Ian Thorpe. Um, and, and while Thorpey and Barnsley may have indeed gone on a skiing holiday in Japan. We saw no actual <laughs> evidence of that. And so Barnsley turning up to promote his latest album by singing a couple of songs, not Barnsley's <laughs> fault, right? Producers made that choice. It just was the worst shoehorned example of how to make shithouse TV I have ever seen Ooh. this year. The problem with these kind of te- television shows is that they're run by people who don't love television. They don't love the people who they're talking about and they oh, the don't know how to create a moment. And so mm. I really believe that. So we, what we saw there was Melissa Doyle, forget about it. You you don't say anything about bad about this woman. I love her. She's no, amazing. she was doing her best. Absolutely she, doing her absolutely best. Absolutely brilliant. But the, the problem is that people, the, they just get too long. The, the leash, you know, they, they're given a long leash and it's not well produced. And that's a really sad thing. Uh, he's got a great career that we could look back on. Mm. It doesn't need... 
uh, four or five hour, you know, mini series. It just needs to be, you know, forty two minutes with ads. And That's to what it only needs to talk be. about his swimming career. Correct. Like Ian has tried very hard to do a whole lot more around and outside that yeah. before we even. Yeah, but I'd like to see his gay stuff. I want to hear about sure. that. I, I, yeah, well, I was going to say, before we talk about the fact that he ultimately came to grips with who he is and what that mm. meant for him to come out, that's a significant moment in his life. Yeah. And it was not even Oh, mentioned. that's outrageous. Yeah, outrageous. Oh, wow. So it, it was two hours of nothing mm. television. It was such a disappointment. And if that's what the rest of the season is going to be like, friends, Back away slowly. Now it did win the slot. It won. The, it There's won. a lot of love for that format, Mog. So Absolutely. people who love this as your life, it's nostalgia. They would have taken a look. Episode two is going to be very yeah, interesting very based telling. on that. I didn't see it. Interesting. Very telling. That's my two All shows. Right. Thanks, Rob. Now it's time for our group binge. And Robbo made the choice this week, and he got us to watch Thirty Rock season four, episode twenty and twenty one. And Robbo, my first question is. Why? 30 Rock <laughs> is an amazing show. So if you think about it, these episodes were broadcast for the first time in 2020. These shows were broadcast for the first time in 2010. That is 12 years ago. We have had a drought of great, genuine comedy since then. There has been nothing, I would say, between there and here that has been the same level as this comedy. It's fantastic. We've got great stars, including Julianne Moore, which she was there for uh, a couple of episodes as well. These are great episodes and great comedy. I, I know, look, viewers, you can't see, you can probably feel the smugness coming through your headphones from Rob McKnight, but he's a man that <laughs> likes a He's a man that likes to watch the Big Bang Theory. So we understand <laughs> where his comedy level comes from. Uh, 30 Rock is a little bit above that. If you can watch it, please watch it. If yes. you love television. It is above that. It's so far up its own ass. it's coming out of its mouth. <laughs> wow. Which weirdly, oh, it's, it's coming out of its own mouth. Wait, 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 wait. Media Bubble wait, bullshit. Wait, wait, wait. It's coming out of its mouth, and weirdly, that's where laughter comes from. Uh, but but Rob's <laughs> there was used no to laughter. wear thir- there was uh, no yeah. laughter. Oh, you're outrageous. It was all in jokes, self referential, and it, 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 it's one of those shows that everyone says, Isn't it great that we've got this comedy looking inside itself at TV? And you know what? It was just indulgent, and things that would not pass for comedy on any other show are treated like, oh, my God, comedy genius. Like, I've sort of watched 30 Rock on and off over the years. I found these two, I thought this something big must happen in these two episodes. Robbo's picked them especially. They were boring as all fuck out. <laughs> wow. Now, uh, you talk if about I the- may, Robbo, just before you yeah. continue on, I, I, do, uh-huh. I do, look, and I appreciate you've watched some episodes <laughs> over time, Rob McKnight. Um to suggest that it's self-indulgent and self-referential and all of those sorts of things. Any, it's like an episode of TV Black Box. A, yes. Any sitcom <laughs> worth its salt, by the time it gets to season four, has established writers, established jokes, established through lines, understandable, a narrative that sits within it. So I watched up, enough to get the references, Mark. I'm not sure that you did, Rob. Rob, oh, your, okay. your comedy. Thanks for telling me what no, I know and what I don't. The Big Bang Theory. I'm just going to keep saying that whenever you say you've got act, you've got comedy chops. No Good comedy that resonates across a broad audience. Don't be don't be snooty. Oh, I'm right? snooty. You on. can like your you can like your fine art of Thirty Rock, but it doesn't appeal to a mass audience. And seriously, the show was so far up its own ass, it wasn't funny. They couldn't see daylight. He couldn't see daylight at all. Robbo, Rob hasn't enjoyed a sitcom since the Bob Morrison show. So, yeah, no, yeah, And even then he didn't get it. But yes. <laughs> Does anyone else want to chime in? Matthew, did you watch, uh, Matt, Matt, Matt Stevenson, did you watch the 30 Rock extravaganza? No, I haven't, but it's now on my to-do list. <laughs> no, no, no. Matt, Matt do it. it. Yeah, Matt, 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 you hard there. work. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. You've got me, you, you, Robert McKnight, have got me intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> That's the right answer, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Philip, what about you? Uh, look, I, I've never really been good at homework, and I may not have read that memo correctly. Um, I, I look, I've, I haven't watched those episodes, but I've seen the show a number of times. 
I think it's funny. Uh, it's not destination TV for me, but yeah, de- I definitely have a laugh and a giggle. And I think if you work in the media, even on the fringes of the media, there's a lot to laugh at in that show. Mm. And <laughs> although, for the record, I do sometimes find it funny, but Matthew Simmons, what were your thoughts? Um, as someone who uh, I can say that I get straight A's because I did do my homework. Um, <laughs> hey. Look, hey, look, I, I've never seen Thirty Rock before this unless it's just been on. I don't remember it. So these are the first two episodes I watched. I laughed twice, once in each episode, and they were those. <laughs> they, they were they were those breathing laughs where you just. So that's that's kind of all I got. Look, <laughs> Robo, it, it, it intrigued me. I think possibly I was missing <laughs> context of the show and just missing what was. What started from the beginning? Well, yeah, no, 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 uh, Matthew. I understand <laughs> what you need. I should have said this before I suggested this show. Uh, the prerequisite is a sense of humour and an understanding of comedy, <laughs> and I understand that a lot of people here don't have that. Um, but I should have said that when I suggested my show. How dare you? How very dare you? And look, you know, the two episodes have a lot of special guest guest stars. So good on them for doing that. But. Um, you know what? I'm not, I'm not ruling it out. Good the on them. <laughs> I'm Even not, that could have saved it. Well, they've got Tina Fey. Like, uh, surely she can get. No, no, she's not a guest star. Movie. She's the star, Matthew. <laughs> she wrote it. I know she's <laughs> the main, but clearly she's got she's not a to get in guest. Those great guest stars. That's what I mean. But yeah. I think possibly oh, oh. I was missing the context. However. It's intrigued me enough to possibly, if uh, the opportunity arose and I wasn't bored, <laughs> to go from the beginning and just see how it was done. But I, it's not on my to-do list. If he's in hospital with his eyes prized <laughs> yeah. open and someone puts it on, he'll watch it. If you want to watch it and you love it and you should love it, if you love television, if you actually find things funny and have a sense of humour, 30 Rock is available right now on Stan. You elitist piece of shit. Telling people that they don't have a sense of humour if they don't like 30 Rock. Oh, excuse us, Mark, what did you want to say? I I, I haven't told you what I thought of the show. Oh, sorry, I'll I'll just pretend I didn't do my... uh, (laughs) Go ahead. And Mark. Thanks, Robbo. Thank you. I I will have to admit that when 30 Rock first aired, I did watch some of the episodes and at the time felt very dumb because I appreciated the show for what it was, loved Tina Fey. I, I didn't get a lot of the jokes. I didn't sort of follow. And and look, the writing is super sharp. Uh, as we evidenced in just those two episodes that you got us to watch, Robbo, there were a lot of great jokes in, in that show. Yep. I laughed zero times. Again, it may be the fact that I am not smart <laughs> enough for that show. Um, I, I <laughs> Mark, found... Mark, I don't know if you know that you're actually agreeing with Rob McKnight, so I just want to, I want to give you a moment to <laughs> and breathe Robo's and see. world is collapsing right now. He thought he was on a winner with 30 Rock and... Pretty much everyone here is gone. Wah, wah. I, I Sorry, Bob, that go I on. Try God's not... favourite idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I Bob, may not be go. smart enough. I may not be smart enough to get it, but I certainly saw the jokes and I appreciated them for what they were. But I didn't <laughs> laugh. And that was, I saw that was what the they challenge. did there, but I didn't laugh. I also <laughs> felt that some of the performances, which I acknowledge is part of the. The, the whole part of the show. Oh. Um, Tracy, uh, what's, I cannot remember his name. Oh, Tracy Morgan, Morgan, Tracy Jordan. Morgan, thank you. Yep. Tracy Morgan could not act if you lit his ass no, on no, fire that's, that's and told of, him his life depends uh, on no, it. No, he's funny. I'll, I'll yeah, give Robbo this good. one. I love I know that character. That's a, but this is the thing. I know it's a part of it. I found his character completely unengaging, disengaging. Just made me want to turn over whenever okay. he was on. Okay, can I suggest everyone starts from season one, give it a season, you will understand. <laughs> no, you had your chance, Robbo. You, you should have said weeks, episode <laughs> one. You took us to season four, episode 20, and this is what you get. Because I thought I was dealing with people who understood <laughs> humour, but I didn't. <laughs> All right, next week well, we're going to watch The Big Bang Theory. Get your pillows, <laughs> get your drinks and milk. If you're suffering from insomnia, don't worry. Rob's got your back. We're going to watch The Big Bang Theory. <laughs> hey, I, I, I tell you what, I don't millions think we of are. people around the world can't be wrong. Now, <laughs> next week, our binge... Our group binge is going to be the final episode oh, yes. of Neighbours. So Excellent. it's probably something we're all going to watch anyway. So you, you technically mean the final three episodes of Neighbours, Rob? <gasps> you want to do the final three? The final three are actually what is airing in that 90-minute segment. It's just they'll air it as one episode, but it's technically the ah, final three episodes. Gotcha. Oh, we'll watch the final three episodes in one hit. Kylie's makeup, there's something weird going down. This woman cannot... Bring it like she's too glamorous. She cannot bring herself down to look 
like a person. <laughs> like Charlene. Breaking news, yeah. Kylie Minogue can't be a person. <laughs> She's what? a goddess, mate. She's a goddess. All right. There you go. That brings us to the end of TV Black Box for another week. Uh, maybe re- maybe send us a review on whether the group binge works or not. <laughs> Mixed results for Robbo. Matt Stevenson, it has been an absolute yes. pleasure having you Woo! on the show. Absolutely. Can't wait to see you back on our Woo! TV Thank screen. You. I've really enjoyed listening to your banter and contributing <laughs> where I could, folks. Thank you very much. Oh. I think Matt's saying we didn't let him get a word in. We don't know about those others. I'm a great listener. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really bad for TV, I might add. Uh, no, no, for future guests, let them have a <laughs> let them have a say. But we love you. You've been great. Thank you very much. Robbo, uh, Phil, Matt Simmons and Mog, thank you very much. We'll see you next week on the TV Black Box podcast. It's where people in the industry get their news. Go to tvblackbox.com.au every day for more exclusive stories.